Hi, my name is Paul, and I'm the Desert Cardinal. And the Desert Cardinal is a bird called the Paraluxia that primarily resides here in the, the desert southwest. Um, it's a relative of the, the regular cardinal that you see that's all red and you know very striking, like the logo for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I'm an avid fan of the Arizona Cardinals, um, and uh, so I've made the title of my YouTube channel uh, the Desert Cardinal, and uh, it's in no way um, mocking a cardinal in the Catholic Church. So, you know, that's I'm not that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, the purpose of my YouTube channel is to chronicle um, my journey through <clears throat> being diagnosed uh, with bipolar disorder and PTSD and anxiety disorders and and that sort of thing and and to hopefully be a source of hope for people you know who have been diagnosed and um, I know that when I've First, was first diagnosed and I got out of the psychiatric hospital um, I got on YouTube and I type in bipolar and see what came up and I've discovered like <laughs> hundreds of people that uh, had done videos and chronicled their journey through uh, mental illness and it was a huge source of hope and and um, uh, a sense of it gave me a sense of community even though I didn't know these people but I, I would watch their videos and and would listen to them and and I would learn a lot um, and also Facebook has um, really good um, uh, bipolar groups and you got to be careful because you know, some of the groups are, are, you know, have people that may not be so much interested in recovery and they tend to cause drama and that sort of thing. But um, if you need some help finding like a group, um, I know several groups that are open groups that are that are good groups. And, you know, feel free to email me at desertrainbow66 at gmail.com. And I, uh, I'll have that as my contact on the channel and in the comments um, below the video. Briefly, um, I'll try to make my videos between 10 and 15 minutes because any more than that, it's, you know, even if you're struggling with mental illness, you know, a YouTube video more than 10 or 15 minutes, you, it's, it's, it's hard to sit through. It's hard for me to sit through. And so I'll try to make them short and <clears throat> brief and this first video I, I just want to primarily talk about um, what it's like getting diagnosed and the process of, of, of acceptance um, you know in the the 12 step programs whether see what I'm doing on time okay we're okay we're four minutes um, <clears throat> if you're familiar with 12-step programs the first step is that we admitted we were powerless over either alcohol or drugs or um, relationships or obsessive thinking whatever and our lives have become unmanageable and you know when I was first diagnosed back in in 2012 um, a couple of things happened the first thing was when I discovered that I was bipolar all of a sudden as I researched it and I listened to the the, the teachings in the in the treatment center and and attended the classes and and asked questions and all of a sudden my life made sense to me 
because for so long in my life, um, you know, usually, you know, they catch mental illness, you know, in a, in a person, you know, in, in their, in their late teens and early twenties and, and when they're young. And, and for me, it was, you know, back in 2012, which what it's 2016. So that was like, you know, four years ago. And I knew I had always struggled with depression, which is a mental illness. Um, but I don't know. It, it just, it, um, uh, in 2012, I had a really severe psychotic episode, <clears throat> full blown mania, ended up in the hospital, uh, inpatient for 28 days and 60 days outpatient. And as I said before, where I was going, going with that train of thought, um, you know, two things happened when I was diagnosed. You know, I, I, I had a great sense of relief because, as I said previously, um, all of a sudden my life made sense to me because for so long I would, I would, you know, say, why do you feel this way, Paul? Why do you do these things that you do, Paul? Why do you, um, why do you feel the way that you feel? You know, I, I used to say that I don't think God ever really wants me to be happy because I, I couldn't be happy. And, um, and I would just do crazy things and and blow through relationships and and uh, just really uh, did a lot of really crazy things and and you know I had been in treatment centers before for other things and but I was never the bipolar disorder was never was never diagnosed and so you know f four years ago when I was diagnosed. Um, it just, it changed my life. And, uh, like I said, that the, the initial response and in, in learning about it and everything, being in the treatment center in a, in a safe environment and feeling protected the, I was very fortunate that the treatment center I went, I was in, um, was very healthy and very, uh, uh, very, uh, safe, very comforting and um, had a very good educational program. Let's see, we're at seven, about eight minutes. Um, so I was fortunate with that. And, and so, you know, for me, the acceptance came, came fairly easily. You know, I've known people where, you know, it's taken them, it's taken them quite a while to come to a place of acceptance and, and, you know, it's different for everybody. You know, one size doesn't fit all. And uh, um, so basically the difficulty as far as acceptance for me came with um, having to be on medication. And uh, um, that was a really tough thing for me because... I remember thinking at the time, I felt like I was in a prison, you know, that I was like chained to this medication and I had to, to take it. And, and it left me like with a sense of hopelessness that, you know, I'm going to have to take this medication for the rest of my life. And, you know, some people I know, they don't take medication. They, they go to therapy and they deal with you know, there, there are issues, you know, in, in therapy and they do fine. Um, some people smoke marijuana and they do fine. Um, some people I know, uh, use like, uh, herbal supplements and vitamins and kind of nutrition, uh, to, uh, to manage their bipolar disorder. And, and those are all legitimate ways of, of handling bipolar disorder and I and I hope someday maybe I can move to a place where you know I can cut back on the med, on the meds and and uh, my mom um, well I've been on lithium since January the 26th and uh, um, today is February the 
9.30 at the 10th. Um, oh, reached my 10 minutes. Uh, so I've been on lithium since January of January 26th of this year. Uh, primarily, the medication that I'm on is Seroquel. Well, the lithium, the Seroquel, Prazosin for the PTSD, uh, Mirtazapine to help sleep, um, uh, Zoloft, and uh, Clonopin. And then I'm on several other medications because I have COPD and uh, um, uh, high blood pressure and you know that sort of thing and a thyroid condition. And um, so the 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 part of acceptance for me was you know coming to terms with having to be on medication and um, you know going back to the the twelve step program kind of thing. There's a line in some of the material that says, only through complete and utter defeat are we able to take our first steps towards liberation and strength. And for me, that's what happened. I had, I had to come to a place of complete defeat. I came to a place where, you know, I was making, you know, between forty and $50,000 a year in a job that I had, uh, teaching. I have a master's degree in special education. And, you know, I came to a place, I came to a point where, um, with the mental illness, I had to resign from that job. I lost that. Um, my wife had to go to work, and there was a time where she wasn't working and I wasn't working, and we went on, you know, public assistance. Um, uh, I'm on currently now. I'm currently on disability. My wife has a, a pretty good job, and and you know we kind of live paycheck to paycheck. But but you know it took you know, having the rug ripped out from under me, um, career wise and family wise, when I first got diagnosed, the the therapist said it would be good for me to separate from my family for a period of time and and oh God, that was so hard because I thought I was gonna lose my wife and my kids and you know, I was just in this in between place and I had just been diagnosed and you know and 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 all of that I'm so grateful for now. I wasn't at the time, but I'm grateful now because what it did was it allowed me to come to a place of acceptance, you know, a place of surrender, a place of saying, you know what, this thing has kicked my ass and I want to get on the road to recovery. And part of my road to recovery is medication. Part of my road to recovery is therapy. Part of my road to recovery is you know, coming up with a hobby and 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 participating in that and and in turn helping others. I mean, there's like I said before, there's there's Facebook. I think I said that in this video. There's Facebook groups and please please feel free to email me at uh, Desert Panther. No 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 Desert Rainbow sixty six at gmail dot com. Desert Rainbow sixty six at gmail dot com. And um, I'd be glad to to steer you towards um, open groups on on Facebook that are that are fairly healthy and and that are safe places to uh, to be and um, so wrapping it up in a nutshell um, acceptance uh, coming to a place of acceptance for me was the beginning of my road to recovery and um, throughout the next s series of videos, you know, I'll be chronicling for you guys um, the lithium because that's new for me. And, and I just started taking it, like I said, January the 26th. And I'm on a low dose. I went to have, a, have blood work done yesterday. And so hopefully they'll get the test results soon. And then they can increase the dosage because the dosage I'm on right now, the only thing I can feel is um, uh, I have to go to the bathroom all the time. Um, I have to drink a lot of water. And uh, and that's really it. Um, uh, so almost to 15 minutes exactly. <laughs> so anyway. Um, there's more ahead, and uh, I look forward to 
getting to know you guys and you guys getting to know me. And uh, um, again, just remember, uh, it's a journey. And we're all at different places in the journey. And it's not so much the destination or where we start. It's the fact that we're in the journey. And all we have right now is the present moment. And the thing that I try to remind myself about on a daily basis is I'm in the present moment and in this moment right now, what's the next right thing to do? And the next right thing to do for me right now is to say goodbye. Thank you.